Hey everyone, uh, just wanted to do a quick update on the E38 LSX swap I did. Um, I've had a lot of feedback on the swap, a lot of questions, a lot of people wanting to know more about it. Um, at the same time, I had a lot of uh, life changes. I ended up having to move to central New York, and I'm going to be up here for a while. Uh, the vehicle's back home. I will be road tripping it next month, so I'll try to shoot some video out of that experience. Uh, but I had so many questions about the swap and people wanting more information about it that I went ahead and uh, gathered all my notes and I'm going to try and put them all together into a series just to provide information. This is not going to be an ASMR video. I am not going to show you pictures of you know me building it or a video or whatever, uh, but this is meant to be like a technical reference for someone who's serious about doing the swap. And uh, like I said in the comments, um, you know, I'm willing to give somebody technical advice. You can go ahead and ping me on YouTube and try and get a hold of me, and uh, I'll be more than happy to help you out as best I can. Uh, again, I'm not with the vehicle, so I don't have it in front of me, but I wrote down as many things as I possibly could while I was doing it. Um, and that's what this series is meant to be, is an explanation of system by system what you're going to have to do to get the thing swapped. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of Go through this little presentation and give you some info this is the very basics and probably what you would want to know as starting out i'm kind of doing this from a very eh, not exactly a beginner experience but it may bore the more advanced folks uh but it may be more useful for some other people so um yeah it's a 2000 bmw x e38 lsx swap uh some terminology you might want to know before you jump into this uh you may be a bmw guy may not um I was not when I started, uh, so you will want to know that the DME, that's the BMW's term for like an ECU, ECUM, uh, I mix those terms all the time, and then the IK is your instrument cluster, the AGS is your transmission control module, and LME is a light module. Uh, those were like the modules that you really had to deal with in the vehicle, and I'll show you ways of getting around them, and ways of also modifying them and making them do what you want. Uh, also, the wire colors, get yourself this guide because most of the diagrams I came across uh, were, you know, had the German uh, nomenclature for colors like Schwarz for black and so on and so forth. Um, so with BMW, uh, the service manual, this is where I got my technical information for working on it. Uh, I got, I just got it from a guy on eBay. They don't sell it anymore. I just checked tonight. Uh the installation was kind of tedious. You have to like copy a virtual machine instance to your car, I'm sorry, to your computer. Once you do that, uh, then you can go ahead and view it. I think this is some kind of workaround for BMW's tech service infrastructure, I don't know. Um, now when they, uh, one thing that did throw me off was that BMW creates their service manual from the mindset of someone diagnosing a circuit. They're not going to give you a pen out of the computer. Um, you're not going to get a full-on wiring schematic of some circuit and just be able to go, oh, okay, you know, what are what are the complete, you know, start to stop connections for this system, such as being the computer? They don't have that. They just have it by circuit. So I ended up having to reverse engineer a couple things and just kind of work my way back through it to figure out, oh, okay, this is how we connect it. Um, another thing is, is if you don't not aware, uh, some resources for the swap would be uh, lt1swap.com. They have absolutely everything you could possibly need. They even do uh, program your ECU. Uh, I did not use them to do that. Uh, I did use 152.com and it was a very good tune. Everything worked, runs great. I have nothing to complain about. Didn't even have to take it to a dyno shop after I was done. Um, so those are some resources there. You can go with the Haynes manual that you can buy on AutoZone shelf or online for cheap or whatever. Uh, I, it left me questioning a few things and I had to go check with other resources. So maybe it's helpful to have that book. I'm gonna leave the book in the back of the car when I go driving you know, on a road trip in case I need it, but um, I'm probably just gonna save the PDF version from lt1swap.com and take that with me or print it out or whatever because that's more reliable in my opinion um but that's uh about it for that um also and this is an important note i want to point out is that uh if your 
ECU looks like the one on the left here. Um, that's not what I did. I went with the older generation ECU on the right. So all the pinouts and things I'm going to be describing for this ECU, uh, are, it's all going to be pertained to this one. Now, there are some caveats behind this in that you would want to uh, think about like your gauges and how you're going to interface with the unit and get information because this ECU is the one on the left is designed for CAN bus operation. And that being said is a lot of the gauges and information for that, you're not going to have a lot of analog sources coming out of this ECU to drive your gauges. Uh, that's going to present a challenge and you might want to, I mean, if you are going to go with this, I think there are some resources out there, but you're probably going to end up having to get like an Arduino unit and program it to understand the B, the BMW uh, CAN bus operations, uh, the packets in that, in that CAN bus there as a trans, some kind of translation matrix to get with, uh, you know, the, to get from this ECU to the gauge cluster of the uh, BMW. Um, I, in using this older style ECU, I found it to be significantly easier. A little unit down here, this is the uh, transmission control module. Uh, it, it, these are, they're separate modules when you get into this generation, which is like the 2008 and newer generation. They run on the two separate modules, especially if you're running an automatic. Um, if you have an automatic transmission or manual transmission and that, the older ECU, it's an all-in-one. So the transmission and the uh, engine are controlled from all from one box, which is nicer. Um, so that those are uh, some other differences there. I just found it easier to wire the analog uh, wiring for the BMW, like the gauges and whatnot coming out of this ECM was a, was a lot easier in my opinion. So. Um, I'm sure I'm probably thoroughly confused you. You've heard me swap between ECU and ECM a million times. That's what I do. Um, to me, they're the same. And uh, that's it for now. I'm going to create some other videos as I go through each circuit and uh, send those out, try and get them all done before the road trip, and then send some video of what happened there.